Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. We have the latest evolving coronavirus here in the Alamo City after another person tested positive. We have details from health officials. I'm Alex Pache from Washington. Coming up, the details of the White House's new 15-day plan to help slow the spread of novel coronavirus. And it looked like taking a live look outside on your Tuesday morning, 70 mild degrees. Cold weather still in the forecast. We're going to check in with Justin Horn. And good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It is March 17th, otherwise known as? Tuesday, March 17th. And St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day. And, you know, because social distancing, which is why we're so far apart, if you didn't know that's what's going on here. I can't pinch you if you didn't wear green. Well, I did, went ahead and played it safe and wore some green. Yeah, but and greener ties are hard to find these that's days. That's a really great one, by the way. Thank you very much. It's kind of Kermit the Frog green. <laughs> right, and, but I'm not going to do Kermit this morning, though. You're not? I'll save it for you. Justin Horn didn't wear green. No, he, he didn't, but he's over there, and he's safe. He, he yeah, is safe. You, you got lucky. There's no crying in baseball, and he's safe. true. I am perfectly safe. And by the way, with the green wall, it's always hard for you know, wearing green, but I could have worn some green socks. I forgot. Drop the ball. Yes, you Very did. Sorry. Okay. All right. All right. Yes. So three weeks or whenever all this is finally behind us, you do get a pinch. Okay. All right. <laughs> Here, I'm going to give you partial credit for Leslie because you have green on radar. Yes, there is oh. some green on radar. We've got some showers out there, mostly off to our south. So this is down around Laredo. We've got some lightning strikes. This is going to stay off to our south. I don't think we're looking at a lot of rain today per se, but as we get into tonight, we are expecting some showers and storms to develop out west. Some of those could work their way into the viewing area by tomorrow morning. Some of those could be on a stronger side, and we'll talk more about that a little bit later. Temperature-wise, 70 at the airport. We still have yet to drop below 70 degrees. 64 Bernie says 67 right now in Bandera. A lot of clouds out there. There could be a little bit of patchy fog this morning, too. Uh, 74 by noontime. We're up to 81 for high today. There's an outside chance for shower, but again, the better chances of rain arrive tonight. And then... We'll be looking down the line for a cold front. It looks like Friday, early Friday, this front moves in, brings big changes. We could be looking at highs in the 50s by Saturday, some good rain chances too. We're going to talk all about it. There's a lot to talk about in the 7 day forecast, but I think there's a few issues out on the roadways this morning. Let's check in with Officer Marcus Trujillo. Good morning, sir. Well, good morning, Justin, and we do have some construction out there, so for some folks, It'll be an easy commute. Others, uh, maybe slight delays. So right now, not too bad. We're looking over there by the dome. So let's move over to 37. You can see 37 in Cesar Chavez. Uh, we do have some construction barrels out there, and they do have one of the lanes blocked off, but there's more than enough room. And take a look at the other lanes. No traffic at this point for now. So that will change. We know that'll change. 35, 37 the interchange so far. No problems there, and we're moving over to I-10 and Frio inbound outbound lane so far running smoothly with no problems there. 21 at Winding Way. Leslie? Thanks, Marcus. Texas health officials are announcing the state's first coronavirus-related death. The patient was a man in his 90s from Matagorda County. Officials say he died Sunday with symptoms consistent with COVID-19. Hospital officials were notified of the positive coronavirus rather result last night. Here in San Antonio, Metro Health is investigating a fourth confirmed case of the virus, and officials say the individual currently quarantined at home. Officials did not indicate where the person recently traveled from. Mayor Ron Nuremberg posted on Twitter what we know so far. To date, four patients in San Antonio traveled to California, Japan, and Spain. While the travel history of the last person is yet to be determined, we do know they are a resident physician. Mayor Ron Nirenberg is also following in the footsteps of other cities across the nation by imposing restrictions on public gatherings. The announcement was made in a joint news conference held with Texas Governor Greg Abbott and other local and state leaders. Nirenberg said an updated emergency declaration now prohibits public gatherings of more than 50 people in city limits. Meanwhile, the mayor is also urging calm when it comes to groceries. He's saying that as far as the grocery supply goes, there is no need to worry and there will be plenty for everyone. Even in the most severe shutdown scenario, grocery stores will remain open for Texans. There is no need to stockpile. There is not a water emergency. There is no need to stockpile water. Our state water system, and especially here in the San Antonio area, is plentiful. There's no need to buy all the water on the shelf. The mayor also acknowledged that these are stressful times for everyone, but said if people abstain from hoarding grocery items, everyone will be safer. Well, on a national scale this morning, U.S. has implemented new restrictions on people going out into public. Officials in San Francisco even issuing a shelter in place. ABC's Alex Prussia shows the details of millions of people 
start a near total lockdown this morning. The novel coronavirus pandemic now affecting the U.S. in ways Americans have never seen. The new normal in California's San Francisco Bay Area, seven counties now under a shelter in place order. Close to seven million people told to only leave home for food, medicine or exercise. We need to anticipate spread, but we also need to prioritize our focus. Uh, most important thing, again, is to protect the most vulnerable. Los Angeles raising the city's operation to level one, the highest, deputizing city workers to do jobs they don't normally do. At least 35 states ordering public schools to close, and at least 15 states have activated the National Guard. Also, new guidelines from President Trump's coronavirus task force, now urging people to avoid gatherings of 10 or more people, discretionary travel, and encouraging older people and those with underlying conditions to stay at home. The administration also telling people not to visit nursing homes and recommending bars and restaurants close in states with community spread. The president saying Americans should prepare for this to last well into the summer. People are talking about July, August, something like that. And America's health care workers already being pushed to the brink. Hospitals are reporting a spike in incoming patients amid a shortage of protective equipment like N95 respirators. The president telling states they should try to get that equipment on their own. It obviously makes a situation where we are in you know, desperate need of these and we're, we actually have to lock them up. I don't think any country or any preparation in the world will be able to be adequate to have the equipment that you need. The Senate is expected to take up a virus emergency bill today after the measure passed in the House. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Retailers across the country continue to adjust to the coronavirus outbreak. This week, Dollar General is accommodating senior citizens. The company says it will let seniors shop by themselves for the first hour each day. Older adults are at a higher risk of developing complications from COVID-19, and many of them are on fixed income. So a safer way to shop at a discount store might be an appealing option to them. Dollar General also says it will change its hours. In politics today, the Senate could potentially take up the family's first coronavirus response act. The bill is an economic package that includes paid emergency leave for those affected and free testing. Last night, the House passed a bill that would making a technical corrections to the original stimulus package. GOP senators say changes include speeding up cash for hard hit small businesses. It looks like the virus has delayed yet another presidential primary. The governor of Ohio announcing on Twitter that polls across the state will be closed today. Mike DeWine points to what he calls a health emergency and an unprecedented public health crisis. The state petitioned an Ohio judge to postpone the election but was denied. State of Kentucky also postponing its primary for what was originally scheduled for May 19th. It's also now scheduled for June 23rd. In your latest news this morning, San Antonio police investigating an officer involved shooting that left a 58 year old man dead. They say it happened just west of downtown last night near the corner of South Laredo and South Alamo. Police say a sergeant tried to pull the man over and that led to a struggle where the man pulled out a machete. SAPD says the officer shot the man one time. The man was taken to a local hospital where he later died. 438, 70 degrees. A man refusing to stand a quarantine after testing positive for the coronavirus. Still ahead, what Kentucky officials are doing to keep the public safe. Coronavirus affecting yet another event. Up next, when Elton John's farewell tour is expected to begin. And taking a look outside with live cam. We've got rain in the forecast and cooler weather. Justin has details coming up. Elton John has become the latest artist to postpone his big upcoming tour as a result of the coronavirus. The North American dates for the Legends Farewell Yellow Brick Road Tour were set to begin next week. Elton John announced Monday 19 concert dates through May 2nd will be rescheduled. He said the decision was made with the safety of fans in mind. The tour is set to pick back up in Columbia, South Carolina, May 22nd. 441, 70 degrees. Universal Studios doing its part to keep communities safe. Still ahead, the new movies in theaters that will be streaming online this week. Knowing when you actually have seasonal allergies uh, and when it could be more than that. Up next, why you might not be getting much relief year round. Welcome back, everybody. Your time now is 444. Well, a man who tested positive for the coronavirus in Kentucky is refusing to stay under quarantine. ABC's Steve Osinsami has details in your GMA. First look. In this morning's GMA First Look, defying orders to quarantine or close restaurant doors. 
He's a 53-year-old Kentucky man who tested positive for COVID-19, and authorities say he refused to self-quarantine. It's a step I hope that I never had to take, but we can't allow one person who we know has this virus to refuse uh, to protect their, their neighbors. In Nashville, bar and restaurant owners were fighting orders from the city to close their doors. On Sunday, the management of a steakhouse owned by musician Kid Rock was refusing to close, sharing in a statement that the show must go on. Certain bars and restaurants in Nashville do not have to shut down. Our main concern are our employees. Video posted online from over the weekend showed a packed bar in downtown Nashville. It's all coming up at 7 a.m. with your GMA First Look. I'm Steve Osinsami, ABC News Atlanta. Well, spring allergy season just around the corner, so that means many of you can expect sneezing, sniffling, and watery eyes. But if your seasonal allergies continue through summer and into fall, 12 on your side, Samara Moore, it says what you're suffering from may not be allergy symptoms at all. I don't get much relief year round. I'm constantly treating from sort of January to December. Visit the allergy aisle a lot. A 2018 study found that 37% of people who bought over the counter allergy medication didn't have an allergy diagnosis from their doctor. So what if they actually have something else going on? In some cases, symptoms like sneezing, a stuffy nose aren't actually caused by allergies. They're caused by something called non-allergic rhinitis. Non-allergic rhinitis is triggered by by non-seasonal things like food, alcohol, odors, smoke, perfume, pollution, medication, and even quick changes in the weather. Symptoms often look like those of allergies, congestion, runny nose, and sneezing, but without the itchy eyes and sore throat. Don't use any aerosols. Um, I don't use perfume. I don't use hairspray um, because I do find any of those will trigger me to repeat it sneezing. Outdoor allergies usually start around February or March, and they can last until about October or November. Plus, around here, there's cedar in winter. If you're not sure what you're experiencing, a trip to the doctor for an allergy test may be in order. And if non-allergic rhinitis is the cause of your suffering, an allergist can prescribe relief. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. It's 447. We're at 70 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. Justin is standing by with a look at your forecast. So right now we want to check on the roadways on my way in. 35, at Marcus to 281. The entire entranceway was blocked off because of a horrible accident. Well, the entranceway to 281, yeah, which to 281. is northbound, that is open. Oh, the entrance to 37 south <laughs> is what's closed. So let's take a look right now. You can see there it is on uh, TransGuide, and here's the map, uh, just so folks get an idea. So southbound 35, as you're approaching the downtown area, your first exit will be for 37 south, and your second exit for 21 north. So just keep that in mind. We do have that here in place. So that's gonna slow folks down just a little bit, little detour. You will have to continue on into the downtown vicinity before you can jump up on 35 and continue on your commute. So. Just remember, buckle up. Bless you. Oh, there, whoever's sneezing <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> All right. Yep. New camera shots, everybody. Oh, yeah. Kind of testing them out again this morning. I bought these microphones for in case we ever have to do remote stuff and things. And he's like, which one did you buy? So just so you know, I found it and I'm sending okay. it to you so you'll know which one to get. All right. We're just making extra contingency plans. Yes. Anyway, Justin is yeah. here for Mike this morning. Justin, good to see you, sir. And yep. uh, overnight we did have uh, a few lightning strokes show up well south of San Antonio. Yeah, south of us. And I think tomorrow morning when we're talking around this time, we may see a little bit more activity on the radar because we're expecting some storms to come in out of the west. So let's first start with live cam. And uh, we'll show you what's going on out there uh, with uh, some cloudy skies at the moment. Temperatures at 70 degrees, still plenty warm. Dew point is at 65 and southeasterly winds at about 11 miles per hour. Humidity obviously uh, very high. We're checking in on some of the you fog here so seat. far. Uh, no big deal at all. We haven't seen much in the way of fog. It does appear to be a little bit of fog developing off to our north. We'll keep an eye on that. Visibility all in all OK right now. Temperature wise, it's warm. We've got temperatures near 70. Uh, just about everywhere. 68 Tarpley, 67 in Bandera, 67 Kerrville. It's going to be a warm, muggy morning, and uh, you'll find these numbers uh, all throughout South Texas. Uh, here's the Doppler radar, and you'll notice we've got a cluster of storms down here. So those are those lightning strikes Mark was speaking of just to the east of I-35. Now, this little complex dying down, but it is going to affect some of our southern counties uh, over the next couple of hours. It'll bring a little bit of rainfall there. So here's what we have coming our way. We look at the water vapor. We can see some of these spins in the atmosphere. 
first disturbance here over Mexico. This is going to be moving in tonight. This is going to kick up some showers and storms. They'll start over West Texas and Mexico and then work their way into our area overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. And then we have a second disturbance behind that. This will kick out, uh, throw a few more disturbances in our direction. So that brings us even more rain chances as we get later into the week. As we look at the big picture here, you can see all the rain and snow that it's uh, bringing to parts of California as it spins just off the coast there. The other thing I want to point out here are the temperatures. Look at these numbers. 19 Bismarck, 9 in Cut Bank, 26 in Casper. There's some cold air up here. And this is actually going to spill south. We think by Friday, you're going to feel some of this cooler air. By Saturday, we could be talking about highs only in the 50s, which feels kind of strange considering where we are, as warm as it's been last few days. Here's what the future cast shows. Uh, we're going to get a couple, couple of isolated showers maybe today. Anything we see is going to be few and far between, but you'll notice by 5 o'clock we start to see some storms out there in Mexico, and they come together here. This is midnight. Uh, we're expecting these storms to play, affect places like Del Rio, Uvalde, Rock Springs. That's where some of the heavy rain could be. We saw heavy rain there a couple days ago. That could cause a little bit of flooding in spots. This little cluster will work towards San Antonio by early tomorrow morning. This shows around 5 o'clock. I think it's probably falling apart. We still could get a few showers out of it, though, and we'll certainly keep an eye on it. Meantime, Wednesday afternoon, probably fairly quiet, just mostly cloudy again. And then by Thursday, we could see a repeat of this early Thursday morning. Here comes another little complex working in out of the west. So there's going to be a lot to watch in the next few days. Severe weather, it's possible. Del Rio, places like Del Rio up towards San Angelo, that's where there is a slight risk of some severe storms again later this evening and tonight. Uh, forecast for today will call for mostly cloudy skies, 81. Stray showers, uh, southeast chilly winds 5 to 15 probably there. And uh, tomorrow, 80. We'll keep a 60% chance of some showers in there out west. And then a 40% chance of rain Thursday, 60% chance Friday. And notice temperatures are tumbling here. And highs only in the 50s. Saturday and Sunday with cloudy skies will have more rain in the forecast, which is welcome. But uh, be advised, it'll be a little bit of a change with these uh, temperatures falling like they are. All right, thank you very much, Justin. Got it. It's, I have to get used to this whole new dynamic. It is a little strange, it feels right? A little, I'm used to go, yeah. what, you're not there. Yeah, we're kind of warm and fuzzy, and this seems kind of cold and impersonal, but for good reason. Yeah. Thank you again, sir. 452, 70 degrees. A Game of Thrones actor testing positive for the coronavirus. Up ahead, what he had to say in his Twitter announcement. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, six, four, three, fireball seven, daily four, six, five, one, seven, fireball five. And your cash five numbers, 9, 11, 24, 32, 34. Texas two-step, 1, 2, 25, 27, with a bonus ball of 18. A Game of Thrones star now quarantined after testing positive for the coronavirus. Plus, the new TikTok challenge a singer started over the weekend. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Romina Puga. Universal Pictures announces it'll make its current and upcoming films available for on-demand rental, becoming the first major studio to offer home viewing during the coronavirus closures. The studio said it'll put its current films, Invisible Man, The Hunt, and Emma, up for on-demand as early as this Friday, March 20th. A 48-hour rental will cost $19.99. Actor Idris Elba has tested positive for the COVID-19 virus. He shared the announcement on Twitter, saying he has no symptoms so far, but found out he'd been in contact with someone who had tested positive. So he self-isolated and got tested. Now's the time for solidarity. Now's the time for thinking about each other. Elba is the latest high-profile celebrity to test positive. Last week, Tom Hanks and wife Rita Wilson said they'd also tested positive while in Australia and are in self-quarantine in their home there. And singer Gloria Gaynor took to TikTok over the weekend to inspire others to properly wash their hands for at least 20 seconds while singing her famed hit, I Will Survive. The video has spawned an online hand-washing challenge. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. Romina Puga, ABC News. That is fantastic. Sing yeah. I Will Survive while washing your hands. It's a hit. Brilliant. 457, 69 degrees. Getting business with the Social Security office done despite it being closed. Still ahead, how they're adjusting their services to the coronavirus outbreak. And this story as well.
Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Taking a look at how coronavirus is impacting our economy, we have much more on how small businesses are being affected around the country. Las Vegas buses are doing their part to keep the community safe and healthy. The extra steps they're taking. One step closer to spring 2020. Justin in for Mike this morning. We'll get an update on his forecast on your St. Patrick's Day. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. It is March 17th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. I'm looking forward to some cooler weather after this warm spell we've been going through, and I think it's going to make its way here. Let's get the latest as we get a little closer to the official starts of spring. Justin, good morning. Good morning to you guys. It feels like we've been stuck at 80 every day for like the last week. We are going to get some changes by the end of the week. So if you're a fan of some cooler weather, I do think it arrives, but not until Friday into Saturday. Right now we're dealing with a little bit of fog out there. Visibility is just fine here in San Antonio, but uh, places like Victoria starting to see a little bit of fog kick in and we've seen a little bit in the whole country. We'll keep an eye on those numbers again right now. You're uh, not seeing any issues today up around 81. It's no uh, different from what we've seen last couple days. Just an isolated shower to this afternoon. We'll be watching what happens tonight uh, because we could see some storms out west and some of those could work their way into our western counties overnight. We saw a little bit of that. Uh, th this morning with some showers crossing over around Laredo. These uh, not so bad though and really starting to fall apart here. Just a few lightning strikes down there uh, east of Laredo at this hour. Temperature wise right around 70. Most places we're at 69 now at the airport. So we just have fallen below that 70 degree threshold. 67 in comfort 68 tarpley 68 right now in Hondo forecast for today. Again, a little bit of patchy fog 74 by noontime 77 2 o'clock will be up around 81 for that high temperature. The chances of storms, though, do kick in tonight, and I think uh, there's a little better chance, especially out west. I don't know if these storms will make it all the way to San Antonio, but we at least could see a few showers by tomorrow morning, and then the pattern becomes far more active by the end of the week and into the weekend. We're going to talk all about it, break it all down for you coming up here in just a few minutes. But we do have a couple problems on the roadways this morning. We want to get to that. Marcus, what's the latest? Well, we had that construction. Then we also had the accident southbound 35. So as we take a look a little bit closer, we're going to zoom in southbound 35. As you're approaching the downtown area, you'll have the 37 south, 281 north, and then of exits, and then you continue on into the downtown vicinity. So it's that 37 south exit currently uh, blocked. You can see there's the flare line. Officer is still out there with that accident. As soon as we can remove that vehicle from the roadway, we can open up that exit for traffic travel once again. Now the traffic is extremely light right now, so it really shouldn't be an issue. And the uh, construction on northbound 37 uh, right there in the dome area. So far, it looks like they have picked all that up. They're moving the last vehicles off the roadway. Mark. Thank you, sir. We continue to follow the latest this morning involving the coronavirus. City of Laredo has announced its first case of COVID-19. According to a news release, the individual has not traveled to any affected areas. They believe the case may have been spread through the community. Patients showed only mild symptoms when the testing was conducted last week in Laredo. That person remains in quarantine as the Laredo Health Department and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention further investigate the case. Well, new this morning, all local Social Security officers will be closed to the public for in-person service beginning today. But there's still another way you can get into contact with them. The decision is to protect people, especially older Americans and those who have underlying medical conditions as well as office employees. If you do need to get into contact or you need services provided, here's how you can do it. First, visit the Social Security website. You can apply for retirement, disability, and Medicare benefits online, as well as check the status of an application and much more. And if that doesn't work for you, your local office will still be able to provide critical services over the phone. If you already have an in-office appointment scheduled, they will call you to handle your appointment over the phone instead. Governor Greg Abbott continues to waive student laws requirements this week uh, for students. Is waived taking the STAR test is also asking the Department of Education to do the same for federal testing requirements as well. Just a reminder, all San Antonio school districts rather have extended spring break this week. The governor said the Texas Education Agency is working to develop at home curriculum to work uh, at, at home as well. While the city of San Antonio is asking people to stay home as much as possible, VIA is doing its best to make sure that those who need a ride are safe from the coronavirus. VIA says seats, rails, handles on its buses and vans and all facilities are being regularly disinfected. They say restrooms are being cleaned three times a day to reduce the risk of infection. 
In the meantime, one of the city's biggest tourist attractions is set to close. We're talking, of course, about the Alamo. The announcement comes after new guidelines were released, limiting the number of people at gatherings. Visitors are being encouraged to follow the Alamo's social media channels for the latest updates. Most people across the nation prepare for anything and everything the coronavirus might throw at us. Stocks still are dropping sharply. Well, this comes after several U.S. states and cities said they were closing non-essential businesses, such as movie theaters and nightclubs, to prevent the spread. ABC's Andrea Fujii has details. It's an eerie quiet in major cities across the country, with many restaurants and bars closing their doors to try and limit the COVID-19 spread. New York City restaurants were ordered to close at 8 p.m. and only offer takeout and delivery for the foreseeable future. This place will just go absolutely dark until until further notice, and I am, I am just completely out of work. President Trump expected to speak with restaurant executives Tuesday morning. According to Wells Fargo, about 82 million people are hourly employees and don't get paid if they don't work. On Monday, the Dow fell nearly 3,000 points, the biggest point decline in a single day and steepest drop in stock since 1987. Grinding the country to a screeching halt comes with a giant price tag. By some estimates, as much as $120 billion this month alone. The airline industry, one of the biggest hit. They say without a bailout of $50 billion, they are set to run out of money by the end of this year. A Federal Reserve study found almost 40% of American adults can't cover a $400 emergency. Now, Senator Mitt Romney proposing a one-time $1,000 check given to every American adult to help ensure they can meet their short-term obligations. There is some good economic news. Amazon announced as online orders increase, it hopes to add 100,000 workers and increase their minimum pay. And some supermarket chains also adding jobs. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. On the West Coast this morning, millions of people have been ordered to stay at home after a shelter in place was issued. Officials in seven San Francisco Bay Area counties said people can only go outside for food, medicine, and outings that are absolutely essential. The order says residents must stay inside and venture out only for necessities for three weeks starting today. It is a desperate attempt by officials to curb the spread of the novel coronavirus. On the East Coast in New York, a Delta plane grounded at JFK Airport after a passenger was exposed to coronavirus. The passenger reportedly received word while on the aircraft uh, that they had been exposed to someone who had tested positive. The passenger told a flight attendant was removed from the plane after it returned to the terminal. The pilot alerted passengers. Health officials would, would decide whether the flight would continue on to Seattle. So uh, at this point, all I can say is just please be patient while uh, we work through this and, uh, and figure it out. We'll give you as much information as we know as soon as we know it. Crews clean the aircraft after passengers deplaned at the gate. One evacuated passenger recently tweeted, it appears they are about to be allowed back on the plane. 508, 69 degrees. Planet Fitness to offer free at-home workout classes via live stream. Still ahead, what Peloton is offering for its at-home workout app. Affecting the 2020 census, what officials are relying on to get an accurate count amid the coronavirus crisis. And live cam giving us a look outside, waiting on the rain and the colder weather. It's coming. Justin has the details. Your time now, 11 minutes after five. If you need more information on the coronavirus, just look it up online because Google says their website, well, it's not ready yet, so don't look it up online. <laughs> what? I don't know what that means, producer. You're going to have to tell me. Google <laughs> expects to roll out an informational coronavirus website later this week. It was supposed to launch yesterday, but they can't do that quite yet until they give people additional information that still is not available. Well, I'll well, find it somewhere other than Google, I guess, at the moment. Okay, so you just have to regular Google it. Don't expect to go to a Google page. Can I Google this? I don't know. To be clear, <laughs> Google is not developing a nationwide tool to directly survey patients for their symptoms. The CDC is developing its own screening tool, though, and Google will link to it. As more Americans limit social interactions due to coronavirus fears, the last thing on their minds might be responding to the census. This year's census will rely on mail, phone, and online responses more than ever before. But it still needs thousands of workers to knock on doors to collect information by interviewing people. At this time, during the 2010 census, 145,000 temporary workers were doing just that. Right now, under 24,000 are doing it.
Nearly one year after Tesla unveiled its new electric SUV, the automaker surprised customers by announcing the vehicles were out for delivery. Tesla has started delivering its Model Y vehicle, which is a midsize electric SUV. The company has three versions of the Model Y and is selling the two more expensive versions first. The most affordable one is expected to start production early next year. Right now, 513, 69 degrees. Changes to the entertainment world due to COVID-19. Still ahead, White didn't stop this movie from getting all the worst awards. Getting your Apple products fixed amid the outbreak. Up next, how the company plans to do repairs while stores are closed. Humera patients, this one's for you. The heroes who won't let your disease hold you back. You inspired us to make your Humera experience even better with Humera Citrate Free. It has the same effectiveness you know and trust. But we remove the citrate buffers. There's less liquid and a thinner needle with less pain immediately following injection. If you haven't yet, talk to your doctor about Humera Citrate Free. And you can use your copay card to pay as little as $5 a month. Humera can lower your ability to fight infections. Serious and sometimes fatal infections, including tuberculosis and cancers, including lymphoma, have happened, as have blood, liver, and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions, and new or worsening heart failure. Tell your doctor if you've been to areas where certain fungal infections are common and if you've had TB, hepatitis B, are prone to infections, or have flu-like symptoms or sores. Don't start Humera if you have an infection. Ask your doctor about Humera Citrate Free. The same Humera you trust, with less pain immediately following injection. The internet drowning in coronavirus-related malware and phishing scams. ABC's Kenneth Moten and Zareen Shah have details in your Morning Tech Bites. In today's tech bites, a strong warning about coronavirus related online scams. Experts say the internet is drowning in malware and phishing scams. They advise users to be highly skeptical of emails and websites purporting to offer information about the outbreak. Your gym may be closed because of the virus, but you can still work out. One of the nation's largest gym chains, Planet Fitness, is offering free online classes. They're open to everyone, even non-members. Peloton is closing its retail stores, but plans to live stream classes. And Apple has details on its updated return policy now that all its retail stores outside China are closed until next week. Items will be accepted up to 14 days after the stores reopen. If you have something being repaired, Apple will contact you to arrange pickup. Those are your Tech bites. 517 on your St. Patrick's Day. Time to check the roadways, see if there are any traffic trouble spots. Marcus, what's happening? Well, we've been following a couple of things this morning. We've been following this major accident, which is southbound 35, that exit for 37 South. So we've been following that one this morning, as well as some construction uh, on 37. Now, the 37 construction, that has cleared up. But as you see, uh, this uh, we still have this accident here in place. So if you do need to travel 37 or 35 southbound, and then you're going to exit for 37 South, you will have to continue on into the downtown vicinity then take the next turnaround. So keep that in mind. Now, let's take a look. I-10 and Frio on the opposite side of the downtown vicinity. So far, no problems there. 37 in Carolina, that's where we had that overnight construction. It's all picked up out of the way. 10 at 410, travel moving along fairly well in all directions. And as we take a look here, you can see there are no other incidents. So one more shot of a transguide camera here. There we go, 37 at Winding Way. That's going to show you that uh, 281 traffic, as you see there, right after this accident. Here we go. We'll figure this out, folks. Too many buttons, not enough fingers. There we go, 281 Winding Way. Southbound 281 starting to pick up. Northbound, not too bad at this point. Well, we're also, as we, there we go. My microphone's now open. Hi, everybody. So we're, we're doing our social distancing now to practice what we preach, but we're kind of mixing things up. So we're doing musical chairs. Just when the music stops, you guys stay where you're at, okay? Okay. Okay. And that's when I pull your chair out? Yes, of yes, course. Yes, and I want to videotape yes. that. Well, that was quick to jump in, Les. <laughs> <laughs> that's called the Anchor Chairless Challenge. Ooh, the Anchor okay. Chairless Challenge. I like that. Yes, it is. Justin, how are we looking this morning, sir? It's a little muggy out there, but no, nah, not yucky yeah no it, it is muggy for sure now the one thing i just saw on marcus's uh, cameras here there's not a lot of fog so we're, we're looking pretty good there but uh, th there could be some patchy spots especially east of san antonio right now 
at the airport where it's 69 degrees. Port SA at 70, Stinson at 66. We've got a light southeasterly wind. That's going to continue to bring in all that moisture. Uh, radar and satellite, uh, as we look at the big picture here across Texas, you notice we've got one little cluster down there south of San Antonio. A little bit of rain down there, some lightning strikes. We saw that earlier. This is going to stay south of us, not a problem. Really, it's sort of an unsettled pattern, but I don't know that we'll see much today. What I want to watch is a little disturbance out here over Mexico. It's kind of hard to pick up here on water vapor, but it's there, and that's going to move in tonight. That's going to kick up some thunderstorms. Uh, it'll develop off to our west and then move into our area overnight. Big question is, will these storms hold together all the way to San Antonio? That's always a big question. Probably not, but we could see a little bit of rain out of it by tomorrow morning. Second disturbance behind that's going to bring some more energy in our, our way uh, by Friday. And uh, we'll see some more showers and storms. There's some good chances there in the seven day forecast. Big picture here across the country. A little bit unsettled weather as you get off to the east. The big story is that low out of California. Dew points. Uh, well, uh, we've got dew points uh, in the 60s right now. It stays humid all the way into Friday, but then the, it just sort of drops off as that front comes through. Yes, dew points will be lower, but I still think we'll have rain chances over the weekend despite that. Uh, looking at temperatures across the country, there's the cold stuff. 17 Bismarck, 26 right now in Casper, 31 in Omaha. This cold air, there's a chunk of it up here that's going to break down and move down the plains. We're going to feel a little bit of that by the weekend. It is going to get quite a bit cooler. We've been stuck right at about 80 degrees. That'll be the case the next few days, but by Friday, look at that number, 59 by the afternoon in the mid 50s, Saturday and Sunday. So it'll be a pretty significant change. Futurecast shows just an isolated shower to this afternoon. And then here come some showers and storms. Those are the ones we mentioned coming in from the west. By midnight, they're affecting places like Del Rio, Rock Springs, and Uvalde. Will they hold together to San Antonio? Maybe. This is at 5 a.m. Does show still that uh, we could have some activity on our doorstep. But by sunrise, a lot of this is going to fizzle out and go away. Not much tomorrow, but as we get into tomorrow night and again early Thursday, here comes another little area of showers and storms coming in from the west. So this is one of those patterns where we got to keep a close eye on the radar. And of course, we'll keep you posted as far as the severe weather, severe weather risk. It is there tonight, but mainly out over places like Valverde County and Rock Springs. And we're really talking wind, maybe a little bit of hail here. Uh, forecast for today for most of us up around 81 degrees. Stray shower and then we'll be watching for those storms out west tonight. Southeast Julie winds 5 to 15 miles per hour and the extended forecast uh, 80 tomorrow. That chance of rain overnight, 80 Thursday, 40% chance of rain, 60% chance Friday with our cold front, high 59 during the afternoon. We'll start off in the 60s, but we'll fall, actually. I shouldn't say high temperature, but temperatures will fall there. And then mid-50s, Saturday and Sunday with some more chances for rain. Guys, yep, I'm going to go down here. Learning. Still there learning. We there we Same. go. Magic. Nicely love it. done, perfect. Mr. Horn. And it's yeah. almost like theater. I mean, look at your perfect spacing there. It's almost like a stage play. It's true. And we're, <laughs> we're abiding by our six feet. Yes. I, think, I mean, we don't have the ruler out, but. It's close. Yeah, we're pretty sure. Yeah. Close, close enough. Yes. Thank you, Justin. Appreciate it, sir. 522, 69 degrees. Universal Pictures says it's making its movies available on demand the same day they open theatrically. Up next, what impact their decision, what impacted rather their decision to do so. And your lottery numbers, pick three numbers, 643 with a fireball of seven, daily four numbers, 6517 with a fireball of five. And your cash five numbers, 9, 11, 24, 32, 34, Texas two-step, 1, 2, 25, 27, with a bonus ball of 18, you are watching Good Morning San Antonio. Happy St. Patrick's Day. A lot of things are changing due to the coronavirus pandemic, including entertainment. But movies, music, and even award shows are finding ways to reach audiences. David Daniel has details in your Hollywood Minute. From our home to yours and keeping our social distance. <laughs> Not even the coronavirus can stop the Razzie Awards. This year, Cats ruled the Razzies with a half dozen honors. Worst picture, worst director, worst screenplay, worst supporting actress for Rebel Wilson, worst supporting actor for James Corden, and worst screen combo for any two half-feline, half-human hairballs. Let's go save the world! Trolls World Tour is coming home. With the coronavirus keeping theaters closed and audiences home, Universal Pictures says it's making its movies available on demand the same day they open theatrically, beginning with Trolls World Tour April 10th. 
Universal also plans to make its current theatrical releases, such as The Invisible Man, available for home viewing as well. Dropkick Murphys always plays Boston on St. Patrick's Day, but the pandemic put a stop to that this year. Instead, the Irish-American punk band is playing for the whole world, a free live-streamed concert available on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook Live. The show begins Tuesday at 7 p.m. Boston time. Getting Celtic in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Uh, that band, Dropkick Murphys, I don't think I'd heard of them before today. They were featured in the movie The Departed, Martin Scorsese. Oh, really? Uh, or as they say in Boston, The Departed. The Departed. The Departed. You got a pocket car in the yard. In the hobby yard. Right now it's 527, 69 degrees. Adjusting life along with COVID-19. Still ahead, the latest on the trial for a coronavirus, the, the trial for a coronavirus vaccine in its earliest stages. And a local shelter making sure they can still help people stay safe. Up next on GMSA, how the battered women and children's shelter is doing their part. Rise and shine. Good morning. It is Tuesday, March 17th. Thank you for being with us this morning. Don't forget to wear green today, everybody, because it is St. Patrick's Day. You may not necessarily get pinched this year, but, you know, just to be safe. You're, he has a green tie, but I can't reach him if I needed to. I know. This is a this is almost a perfect thing. I'm going to request the state permanent. It's a perfect thing for Justin, because he didn't wear green today, Justin. Oops. Oops. <laughs> I really, I, I'm surprised I forgot. I, I even thought too. about it last night, and, you know. But we can't wear green on the green wall because uh, you know, your socks we disappear. But I, I could have went with the socks as a fail on my part. It's OK, buddy. Sorry. We'll forgive We've you. We've got bigger fish to fry right now. <laughs> it's true. And we're watching what's going on in radar. We've got a couple showers down there around Laredo. We had some uh, lightning strikes with this earlier. Those have since dissipated. So it really is not a problem anymore. It'll stay south of us. We're not looking for a lot of rain, at least this morning. If you missed Paul Cow yesterday, it was bad news for mold sufferers. Uh, it was at eight. 1,560. Mold was in the high category. Oak was still there. Not a surprise, moderate. Uh, we're going right into oak season. So these, these two numbers with rain around two are going to stay pretty high. Just, just a heads up. And as far as oak season is concerned, uh, yesterday we were at 170 moderate. So we're com coming close to the peak. And, and that means that these numbers are probably going to go a little bit higher before they come down. So allergy sufferers, beware. Temperature-wise this morning, close to 70. We haven't really shifted much from that number. So uh, we may drop a degree or two more before we turn the corner. We'll be back in the low 80s this afternoon. It's warm and muggy. There could be some patchy fog out there this morning. So far, we haven't seen that. And then just an outside chance of shower this afternoon, up around 81, as we mentioned. And then the better chance of rain tonight, especially off to the west of San Antonio. We're going to break down that forecast and talk about the timing of our next frontal boundary. That's coming up here in just a few minutes. But we do want to get over to Marcus, see what's going on on the roadways this morning. I'm guessing they're pretty quiet. You would expect them to be quiet, but this is our second major accident this morning. Now, the first one from the overnight uh, shift, we'll get to that one in just a second. Uh, this one popping up, northbound main lanes of 410, and then uh, at Exchange Parkway. And then this one here, southbound 35, that exit for 37 south. Here's the new one. If you're on 410 southbound, so you're going from I-10 410 back over towards Highway 90 right there, just past Bandera in that vicinity. But these are going to be on the northbound lanes. Now take a look at Trans Guide. This is 35 at Pine. That camera showing the last officer driving off. So now that exit for southbound 37 is open once again. Leslie. Thank you very much. Well, it is more than just a suggestion now. The city of San Antonio has a ban in place on public gatherings of 50 or more people. Katrina Weber is live near downtown with more on that declaration, which was signed by Mayor Ron Nirenberg late yesterday. We understand it includes some expected but also chilling information. Well, that's right. It definitely uh, talks about a lot of things that are, are very uh, would be di very disturbing to us. It reminds us that we are in a state of local disaster and a public health emergency. It also talks about the CDC's recommendations and responses to that. Now, the order by the city is not quite as restrictive as what the CDC suggests, which is no gatherings of 10 or more people. Instead, the city and the mayor have uh, banned gatherings of 50 or more people that, with a few exceptions. All of this comes at the same time a fourth case of coronavirus was confirmed locally. Mayor Nirenberg sent out a tweet about that, clarifying that the latest person affected is a resident physician. 
A news release from the city says, like all of the other cases so far, this also involved a person who traveled recently. So far, no information has been released about who that person may have had contact with. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Also here in San Antonio, the Metropolitan Health District is investigating a fourth confirmed case of the virus. Officials say the individual is currently quarantined at home. While officials did not indicate where this person recently traveled from, Mayor Ron Nuremberg posted on Twitter what we know so far. Today, four patients in San Antonio traveled to California, Japan, and Spain. While the travel history of the last person is yet to be determined, we do know they are a resident physician. The CEO of the Battered Women and Children's Shelter has a crucial and life-saving message amid COVID-19 concerns. The shelter is open and all services are still available. If you need help, please reach out. CEO Marta Palaez told us about a few small changes when it comes to social distancing, including things like mealtime and group time. Comprehensive services, the legal services, the counseling, the case management, all of that will continue. We're also in touch with uh, uh, the chief of police and with the sheriff and with the courts to make sure that all of our services are provided in concert with everybody in the community. Laia says all incoming clients will be asked extra health questions and any staff feeling silk, sick rather will not be allowed to work. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center teaming up with the city of San Antonio to hold a special community blood drive at the Alamo Dome this week. Blood drive will be held from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Officials said the Alamo Dome was chosen as a dotation location because it allows for social distancing between donor beds and waiting areas. Those who'd like to donate blood must make an appointment at southtexasblood.org slash give SA or by calling 731 55 Nine zero. Well, as we continue to learn the latest on the coronavirus around the country and the world this morning, it's not easy to lose sight of normalcy. Unfortunately, it could be months before things get better. CNN's John Lawrence reports. First, some good news. An experimental trial for the coronavirus is in its earliest stages. This is one of the fastest vaccine development launches in history. Not even close. The study from the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases will attempt to confirm the vaccine works and is safe. There will be three separate doses, 25 milligrams, 100 milligrams, 250 milligrams, and the individuals will be followed for one year. As that research moves onward, people are adjusting to a new normal. You have to think of this in a wartime uh, worldview. You have to think of this as something where you're going to see a massive mobilization uh, to save lives, to help people through their suffering with this disease. Many restaurants, including Starbucks, Chick-fil-A, and McDonald's, are now only serving takeout or delivery orders. California, Pennsylvania, New York City, and other areas have ordered bars to close their doors. How am I going to pay everybody? How's everybody going to pay their bills? I'm not gonna, how am I going to pay my bills? We are one of the industries that have been hit the hardest. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a lot of unknowns. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Now, as of Tuesday night, there were more than 182,000 confirmed cases and 7,100 coronavirus-related deaths worldwide. That's according to Johns Hopkins University. Well, the Poteet Strawberry Festival has been postponed and may be possibly held in the fall due to the coronavirus outbreak. Originally scheduled for April 3rd through 5th, directors and other key stakeholders decided it was just best to postpone the festival. The festival is the latest in a series of popular San Antonio area events to be affected by the coronavirus. Fiesta San Antonio, which was scheduled for April 16th to the 26th, was postponed, and South by Southwest in Austin was canceled. There is no word on when it will be rescheduled. Our coverage of the outbreak goes even deeper on our website, KSAT.com. All the stories we've done on air and online are in one spot with constant updates on the impact of COVID-19. That means closures, which now includes the Alamo, cancellations, and the government response from federal, state, and local level. You can all find it right there on our homepage at KSAT.com. And I mentioned my mom and dad are visiting from yes. Charlotte, North Carolina this week. My mom asked the other day, she said, why is it called the novel coronavirus? And I said the word novel, I looked it up, mm -hmm. the word novel in this context means something we have not seen before. Oh, that's fascinating. There we go. It's like, I don't have an answer for that, so I'm glad you did. Now that's what Google's for, right? <laughs> yes. 539, 69 degrees. Two brothers stuck with thousands of bottles of hand sanitizer after hoping to make a quick buck. Still ahead, what they plan to do with the massive stock. Gaming industry is asking for help. Up next, what they're hoping the feds will do to help them out 
after coronavirus impacted their business. And live cam giving us a look outside. Looking forward to seeing a little rain and cooler weather. Justin Horn will give us an update coming up. Dozens of casinos all across the country closing due to the coronavirus. Experts in the gaming industry say this could be an industry disaster. They're hoping the government will help them out. 40% of all casino employees in the U.S. have been affected by these closures. Many of the casinos are hoping for grants, loan guarantees, or refundable tax credits to keep businesses from running out of money. Right now we're at 542, 69 degrees. Figuring out what to do with $18,000 worth of hand sanitizer. Just ahead, what two brothers are doing after trying to take advantage of the coronavirus outbreak. As we go outside with uh, our friends at Transkai looking at cameras around town, the Alma Dome glowing there in the distance at I-37 and Carolina. A couple different vantage points. You're watching GMSA. <coughs> Excuse me. SpaceX announced Wednesday there will be a new launch date for the Falcon 9 rocket. It's happening after they canceled the mission Sunday morning. SpaceX originally plans to launch 60 Starlink broadband internet satellites into orbit from Kennedy Space Center, Florida. But the company said the last minute there was an issue involving engine power. The coronavirus continues to strike the entertainment industry as well. Fox's So You Think You Can Dance canceling in-person auditions because of the virus. The tryouts will be held in Los Angeles, Miami and New York City. Hopefuls who submitted online will still be in consideration. Auditions can still be submitted until March 22nd. The virus has also forced late night talk shows to perform without studio audiences and Saturday Night Live is on hold for the time being. Well, as we all know by now, panic buying has been on the rise amid the global spread of the coronavirus. Consumers around the world are stockpiling goods like hand sanitizer, canned foods, and toilet paper. CNN's Hunter Hoagland spoke with a man who bought nearly 18,000 bottles of hand sanitizer, while many are still searching to find one. For Matt Colvin, a pandemic meant an opportunity. It, it went to zero to 60 really fast. After the first COVID-19 death in the United States, Colvin went state to state clearing out sanitizer shelves. He now sits with 18,000 unused bottles in his home and storage unit, while people in the Tennessee Valley struggle to find one. The bulk of it was purchased with just driving around to uh, retail stores in the Chattanooga area. Colvin bought the sanitizer with the intention of selling them for profit on Amazon before they took his listings down. Now, feeling the same panic as many others. Oh crap is the uh, P PG way to say it. Though he would not discuss on camera the exact prices he sold the sanitizer for, he told the New York Times in a recent interview that some items were listed at $70 a bottle. Um, the pricing on Amazon was higher than it was definitely higher than retail. Stating in a shirt that says family man, family business. He says he never anticipated the struggle other families would go through because of a shortage. Would you say you're sorry? Sorry for purchasing, if, sorry for buying all of this product. No, I don't think that I would. After receiving backlash online, Colvin says he's making plans to donate the rest of the sanitizer. With, with business, there's wins and there's losses. Um, and this is one, a situation where cutting my, uh, cutting my losses is the right thing to do. What an odd interview. It was a very odd interview. Yeah, and he has wound up donating, I've heard. All he of did. He, yeah. Well, yeah, he couldn't sell it. So it's out of his garage and off his mind. Mm -hmm. And still not in the stores. No. It's not. <laughs> Maybe he has a cleaner conscience this morning. Who knows? Well, we can hope so. Let's check on the up. Uh, is it roadways or is it Justin now? I think it's roadways. It's roadways, all but right. I, going back to that story, I believe also is uh, he's also under investigation by the state in which he lives for price gouging and you can bet they're going to be subpoenaing that interview. Ah, so right now, you're so, right. Th and that has more to do with, uh, according to the story I read yesterday, that has more to do with why he's donating it to ah, everybody okay. else now. This is all far starting to fit together now, yeah. puzzle pieces. Yeah. But as far as roadways are concerned, for those who do have to venture out, uh, we do have a major accident 410 uh, at Exchange Park in the northbound main lanes. It's going to be right before you get to Bandera Road. Other areas looking pretty good, like 35 at Pine. We did have that accident southbound 30, 35 earlier this morning, 
blocking that exit for southbound 37. But at this point, all is clear. From what we can see, roads are dry. They stay dry. A couple of uh, cameras, a little cloudy, but I think that's left over from yesterday's moisture, Justin. Yeah, I think you're right, Marcus. Uh, and we're not seeing much in the way of Fox, so it's still some pretty clear visibility. We're starting to build some excitement here because we've got a cold front coming later this week. This is going to cool us down. It's going to be noticeable, if not strong. I'm going to say noticeable for now, but we're talking temperatures going from the 80s and 60s and dropping down into the 50s and perhaps 40s for lows. So this is going to be a change. We'll also get some rain with it, too. So that's the other beneficial side to all of this. Outside right now, we've got cloudy skies, 69 degrees at the airport, 70 at Port SA, 67 at Stinson, a southeasterly breeze that continues to usher in moisture. So it's still pretty sticky out there. That led to some showers overnight that crossed over the border from Mexico into the Laredo area. But these showers are quickly diminishing. We're not looking for much in the way of rain. Really this morning or even this afternoon, it's tonight that we're going to have to watch as uh, some showers and storms come out of Mexico once again and uh, move into our area. Big area of low pressure off to the west. This is bringing rain, some snow to parts of California. This is going to bring some energy to us uh, by the time we get into, say, Thursday, Friday. And so that's going to enhance our rain chances, too. Some things coming together here. Temperatures, plenty cold up north. 31 Minneapolis, 31 Omaha, 17 Bismarck, 4 in Cup Bank. There's an area of cold air up here in Canada that is going to slide down and we're going to feel a little taste of that and that's why we're expecting those cooler temperatures by the weekend. Uh, that frontal boundary again scheduled for Friday. Right now it looks like Friday morning. That's the latest computer model update and so temperatures would probably fall during the day on Friday. We'll start off in the 60s and then dip into the 50s. Saturday and Sunday highs in the 50s. Cloudy skies. Chances for rain. In the meantime though we'll still have some warm and humid conditions today through Thursday. So here's a look at the future cast. And we've got maybe a couple showers this afternoon, although I really don't think it'll be much. Yesterday we certainly didn't see much. But watch what happens out west. We get some storms building in Mexico. These move uh, towards Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Rock Springs, Uvalde. This would be midnight, early, early Wednesday morning. We could see a couple strong storms associated with this too, maybe some heavy rain. Now these areas got some pretty good rain a couple nights ago. But as we go forward in time here, this thing starts to diminish as it makes it to San Antonio, sort of falls apart. Uh, we may see a couple showers tomorrow morning, but I think by the time it makes it here, it's a shell of its former self. And uh, as we go into tomorrow afternoon, not much, but we may watch for some more storms coming in Thursday morning from Mexico as well. Severe risk hey, is on the scale of a one to five, about a two. So we could see some stronger storms. Rock Springs to Del Rio. We'll keep an eye on the radar this afternoon or tonight, I should say. 81 degrees today. Southeast Chile winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. The extended forecast will go 80 tomorrow, 80 on Thursday as we officially go into spring. 40% chance of rain and then a 60% chance Friday with that cold front. We talked about the temperatures, but there's also the rain chances there. So I think some good chances Friday morning, some more chances on Saturday and Sunday as well. Well, it looks like the weekend forecast is going to be uh, pretty conducive to what we're doing right now. Kind of hunker down and stay at home. I think so. It'll, it'll well, they announced they're going to let a lot of um, these new movies go on the streaming service. Streaming so. same day they're going to be in theaters. So that's kind of fun. Already seen Frozen 2 twice. I'm not surprised. So I'll see it some more. Yes, you will. Did your kids enjoy it too, or did you just watch it by yourself? I mean, no. It was, it's, <laughs> it's not a bad plot, though. I'll say that. Just a guess here, considering yeah. that you've got two, and you're you're going to watch it as many as your low temperature on, yeah. I think, Saturday morning. It's going to happen. You could, 46 you. times. So the kids yeah. liked it. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. Okay, good. Yeah. That was super smart of Disney to release it three yeah. months early, wasn't it? Well, and actually really sweet of them to do it, too, considering yeah. a lot of kids are home and they're frustrated. Hey, small blessings these days. True. All right, thank you, Justin. Right now we're at 553, 69 degrees at the airport. Today's a day when people celebrate their Irish heritage. Next on GMSA, how many millions of Americans self-identify of having Irish ancestry? Today we're all a little Irish, okay? Are we? Yep. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, six, four, three, fireball, seven. Your daily four number, six, five, one, seven, fireball, five. And your cash five, nine, 11, 24, 32, 34. And your Texas two step, one, two, 25, 27, with a bonus ball of 18. 
Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the coronavirus crisis. The president calling for those tough new guidelines, urging people to not gather in groups of 10 or more and limit unnecessary travel, but also warning that this could go on for months. The stock market, of course, tanking, suffering its worst day since Black Monday in 1987. Dr. Deborah Burks, White House Coronavirus Response Coordinator, will join us live right here on GMA. Well, today is St. Patrick's Day, a time when many Americans celebrate their Irish heritage. About 33 million Americans self-identify as being of Irish ancestry. That's five times the number of people on the actual island of Ireland. There are normally hundreds of parades across America to celebrate, but most have been canceled due to COVID-19. March 17 marks the assumed date of St. Patrick's death, which 1,500 years ago. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. Thanks to coronavirus, it's far from courtroom business as usual at the Justice Center. More on what you need to know about how judicial business is operating, or maybe isn't, right here in the Alamo City. As we go to break, let's take a look at Transguide on your St. Patrick's Day. We are seeing quite a few cars on the road for this time of morning, considering a lot of folks are at home or working from home. 281 at Sprucewood. We'll be right back. Making headlines this morning, President Trump expected to address how the coronavirus is impacting businesses across the nation. Here at home, the virus is also interrupting the judicial system at the Justice Center complex. Outside with live cam, are you still ready for a chance at rain and a cool down as we head into the beginning of the spring season? Justin Horn is standing by with your St. Patrick's Day forecast. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday, March 17th. Top of the morning to you. <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Don't forget to put your green on today. That's right. It is St. Patrick's Day, and I didn't mean to infer that we have a chance of a cool down or a chance of rain today, but we have had some activity on radar yeah. very early this morning. Let's say hello over there to Justin Horn. Hi, Justin. Hello. hello. Hey, uh, yeah, we had some showers this morning. Those are all dying down, but we are excited about that cool down. It is coming. We think by the end of the week, we're going to get a cold front. And temperatures will drop down into the 50s potentially. We're talking high temperatures in the 50s here by the weekend. Here's a look at the radar, basically giving us the all clear minus these showers that are quickly diminishing down there around Laredo. They had some thunderstorms down there earlier. Those uh, again are going away. Uh, temperatures are awful warm. We're in the upper 60s, uh, close to 70 in a lot of spots. We have dropped down to 67 at the airport. 68 Boulevard, 64 Bernie State, 68 in Tarbley. Well, looks like it was a decent setup for a little bit of fog this morning, but so far. That has not been a problem at all. We haven't seen any visibility issues. And uh, Marcus will show you Transguide here in a second. It looks like things are pretty clear there, too. We'll keep it in the forecast just in case, but most of us uh, look to be okay. 74 by noontime, 77, 2 o'clock, 81 by 5 o'clock. Southeast Julie winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. There's an outside chance for shower today, but there's better chances tonight. We're going to be watching for some storms coming uh, in from the west, and a few of those could be on the strong side. So we're going to break down that possibility here in just a couple minutes. But let's get over to Marcus now and check in on the roadways. How's it looking? Not too bad, Justin. We still have that one accident over there in the 410 Bandera area. It's actually northbound 410 uh, right there at Exchange Parkway. So officers just about wrapped up with that accident. Hopefully uh, we'll get it cleared out of the way. But as you see from the uh, indication here on the map, really not slowing down folks. Now we do have lighter traffic this week, just like we did uh, actually even lighter traffic than we did uh, the previous week from spring break. So let's take a look outside through Transguide. 604 Culebra, no problems there. No congestion exiting for Highway 151 and then 35 Benzinga when you can see folks exiting for the hospital there, no issues. And then here in the downtown area, 35, 37, the interchange still looking pretty good this morning. Mark. Thank you, Marcus. Texas health officials announcing the state's first coronavirus related death. The patient in his mid 90s from Matagorda County. Officials say he died Sunday with symptoms consistent with COVID-19. Hospital officials were notified of the positive coronavirus results last night. Well, as retailers adjust to the coronavirus pandemic, Dollar General is accommodating seniors. The retailer says it will let senior citizens shop by themselves for the first hour each day. Older adults are at a higher risk of developing complications from COVID-19, and many seniors are on a fixed income. So a safer way to shop at a discount store might be an appealing option to them. Dollar General also says it will change its hours. 
We've received several questions from viewers asking why retailers like HEB are not providing a shopping hour for senior citizens. In a statement, HEB said in part, quote, we feel that offering a senior hour is not the safest option and are looking at better options to help our vulnerable populations get the items they need, including using curbside and home delivery. HEB did agree a $3 million commitment to a $3 million commitment, commitment to uh, support local organizations. That includes a trailer of food that will be donated to the San Antonio Food Bank later today. In total, HEB will deliver 15 truckloads of food and household supplies to various food banks around the state of Texas. Well, in view of the situation regarding the coronavirus, it is far from courtroom business as usual at the Justice Center complex, but... They are in business. Paul Venema has more on what you should know about how the judicial business is operating. The Justice Center halls are, for the most part, empty and silent. The central jury room is also empty, and there will be no juries impaneled. There will also be no trials. Thank you. Please be seated. But that does not mean there will be no courtroom business conducted. Hearings will still be held, pleas will be accepted, and sentencing will still take place. We'd like to have our dockets continue. We don't want the uh, cases to get backed up, but at the same time, we're also very aware of the issues that are surrounding the COVID-19 virus. Handling the virus balanced against judicial economy is a challenge, according to the local administrative judge. Jury trials will resume as soon as possible. Until that time, all the provisions are being made to avoid speedy trial issues or other constitutional violations. And the Court of Criminal Appeals and the Texas Supreme Court have issued a joint order allowing judges to modify court procedures within the boundaries of the Constitution. Bottom line, it's pretty simple. If you're scheduled for jury duty, don't show up. If you're on the docket, show up. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. Meanwhile, trying to control coronavirus is taking a major toll on the U.S. economy. With many restaurants and bars closing their doors, President Trump is expected to speak with restaurant executives about it this morning. On Monday, the Dow fell nearly 3,000 points. It was the biggest point decline in a single day and steepest drop in stock since 1987. Grinding the country to a screeching halt comes with a giant price tag. By some estimates, as much as $120 billion this month alone. The airline industry is one of the biggest hit. They say without a bailout of $50 billion, they are set to run out of money by the end of this year. Meanwhile, a Federal Reserve study found almost 40% of American adults can't cover a $400 emergency. Senator Mitt Romney proposing a one-time $1,000 check given to every American adult to help ensure they can meet their short-term obligations. Also being hit hard, the oil industry. Gasoline demand diving here in the U.S. with businesses being shut down and Americans being asked to stay home. Gasoline refining margins fell 95% yesterday to levels not seen since December of 2008. Normally they're on the rise ahead of the summer driving season. And you may want to hold off on your next trip to the dentist. The American Dental Association recommends postponing elective procedures for the next few weeks due to the coronavirus. According to the ADA, that would make sure dentists can focus on patients who are in need of emergency work. So far, the CDC says there are nearly 3,500 cases in the United States. The Kentucky Derby is being postponed from May to September because of growing concerns about the pandemic. A formal announcement will be made later today. Last time the Derby wasn't held on the first Saturday in May was 1945. That's when the federal government issued a ban on horse racing because of World War II. The Derby is the latest major sporting event to be postponed or canceled because of the outbreak. New information continues to come into our newsroom every day. Right now on KSAT.com, we are updating a list of closures, schools offering meals, and other important information. We also have information on a three-day blood drive at the Alamo Dome. It actually starts today. You'll find all of it on our homepage. Just visit KSAT.com. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man is recovering after a woman stabbed him with a pocket knife. This happened about midnight. It was in the 11,000 block of Dove Ranch on the city's far west side. Police say the man and woman were yelling at each other when she stabbed the man in the leg. The woman left the scene, but police detained her a few blocks away. She does face possible aggravated assault charges. He was treated on the scene by EMS and later drove himself to the hospital. This morning, San Antonio police are investigating an officer-involved shooting that left a 58-year-old man dead. It has happened just west of downtown last night at the corner of South Laredo and South Alamo. Police say a sergeant tried to pull the man over and it led to a struggle where the man pulled out a machete. 
SAPD says the officer shot the man one time. The man was taken to a local hospital where he died. And take a look. San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers need your help to find these suspects who they believe were involved in a robbery. It happened at the Lassus Food Mart on the city's southeast side back on February 28th. Police say a man and woman tried to get away with merchandise by putting it in a bag. When an employee tried to grab the bag, it tore. SAPD says while one of the suspects tried to pick up the items, the employee was punched and kicked. Both suspects got away. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. It is exactly 609-67 degrees. Still ahead, why a man with the coronavirus in Kentucky is refusing to quarantine. And next morning, how coronavirus crisis is casting a shadow over the Democratic race for president. And live cam giving us a peek outside on your Tuesday morning. So happy to have you with us. It's going to be nice to see a little bit of rain. My yard can certainly use it. Yours probably can too. Six twelve, as coronavirus casts a shadow over the Democratic race for president, President Trump says states should still hold primaries. But Ohio's governor announced late last night that polls will be closed today. Whitney Wilde is in Washington to explain. Facts you have. In any other political cycle, the battle between Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders would dominate headlines. Candidates would be out shaking hands and holding rallies, all to get in front of the most voters. But the world has changed because of coronavirus. We bring many thousands of people out to our rallies. I enjoy it very much. Uh, we're not doing that right now. I wash my hands God knows how many times a day with hot water and soap. Election officials in Arizona, Florida and Illinois vow to hold their primaries as scheduled on Tuesday. Many people concerned about coronavirus lined up to vote early. I just don't want to get caught up in all the craziness with the virus and all the crowds and I want to make sure that I get my vote in. Monday, Ohio's governor recommended moving the primary scheduled for Tuesday to June. Thank you. Already other states postponed their primaries. I've been to the grocery store. I saw the empty shelves. So it's probably the best thing to do right now. Delaying the vote is a move Sanders agrees with. Well, I'm thinking about some of the elderly people sitting behind the desks, registering people, doing all this stuff. Does that make a lot of sense? I'm not sure that it does. But President Trump says postponing primaries is unnecessary. I think postponing elections is a very uh, it's not a very good thing. Election workers on Tuesday will wear gloves. Voting machines will be cleaned and sanitized. And election sites have moved away from retirement communities. All efforts to ensure the voting population is safe. We are well now. We want to have our votes, whether we're alive or dead. In Washington, I'm Whitney Wild. Tuesday morning, just about 6.15. Time to check on the roadway, see how your traffic commute will be flowing today. Marcus? Well, right now as we take a look at the roadways, we are looking a lot better. We've cleared up that accident that was at uh, 410 and the uh, at Bandera area. Now let's take a look at a couple of trans guys. There's 281 and Grayson. No problems for the north or the southbound lanes and looking at some others like uh, I-10 at Roland. You can see no problems. I-10, 410 interchange getting a little bit busier and over at I-10 at the Y, you can see so far no problems here in the downtown area. Roads are dry, so hopefully they'll stay that way. Justin, as we take a look, you can see that uh, not a whole lot as far as traffic volume. This is probably what we can expect as the new norm until things settle down a bit. Hi there. I was looking, I'm trying to order dog food before shipping gets affected. Uh, Truman <laughs> eats like a horse. He, he is, is actually a, horse. a small horse. Yes, yes that's true. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I was just making sure I got my really pricey that's a dog food. thing to do. That's fair. Yeah. Anyway, sorry guys. <laughs> might might want to try a feed store. Yeah, I know, more. right? Yeah, exactly. Just pull up the truck, load it up. Yeah. Well, we're going to have wet roads to deal with, it looks like, coming up pretty soon. Yeah, and, and the big question is uh, rainfall. We need some. Yep. I mean, at this point, our, our lawns need it. Uh, and so we're still behind uh, with rainfall. We could use a little bit more, and there is some in the forecast. So for March, we're at about half an inch. That's about seven-tenths below the average. And uh, for the year, we're at 3.45. That's about an inch and a third there below average. Yes, there is some rain. Uh, as far as how much we'll get, that's still in question. Hopefully it'll be somewhat plentiful as we get into Friday and Saturday. We're going to talk about that forecast coming up in just a few minutes. But first, let's go outside for you. 67 degrees at the airport, 68 Port SA, 66 Stinson. 
East Southeast Julie winds. It's still very humid. No fog out there. Uh, we have not seen that at all, so it looks like visibility is going to be just fine this morning. There is some fog up across Northeast Texas, but not here. Big picture shows a few showers in Oklahoma. We had one little shower down there around Laredo. Some thunderstorms actually a little bit earlier. But those have since dissipated. So really things are quiet now, but we've got a disturbance out over Mexico, and this is one I want to watch because it moves in tonight. It's going to kick up some storms. And the question is, how far east will they move? I think places like Del Rio, Rock Springs, uh, Uvalde, all places that will probably get some rain overnight tonight into early tomorrow morning. Could these hold together to San Antonio? Yes, it's possible. We could see a little bit of rain by uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, there's a secondary disturbance here. This is the bigger storm system, and this is going to throw some energy our way too by Friday. And so that's why rain chances are looking pretty good at this point. Big picture across the country. We've got some uh, showers from Memphis stretching up to Washington and then uh, New England seeing a little bit of snow this morning and then quite a bit of active weather out towards California with that low as we showed you. The other side of all of this, the temperatures. It's cold up north, 30 Omaha, 8 right now in Cup Bank, Montana. You go into Canada, the numbers go even lower. We're going to feel some of this cooler air. It's going to shove south. Uh, down the plains towards Texas. Now, obviously, numbers will not be this cold, but we'll see a pretty nice cool down by the weekend with a cold front that is uh, set to move through on Friday. Well, let's talk about short term forecast, though, and uh, we're expecting to see maybe a shower to this afternoon. This is around five o'clock and then look what happens out west. This is a different computer model than we looked at last half hour. This one speeds things up a little bit and uh, this brings some storms in to Rock Springs, Uvalde, Carrizo Springs by 10 o'clock tonight and then moving towards San Antonio by say 3, 4 a.m. This is an hour or two ahead of the other model we looked at, but I think sometime in that time frame, 3 to 5 a.m., we could see some showers, maybe still a few leftover thunderstorms here in San Antonio early tomorrow morning, and then everything would calm down before perhaps another round by Thursday morning. That'll be something to watch. Severe weather risk is there, mainly out over Valverde County, Edwards County. Uh, just a slight risk on a scale of one to five. We're talking about a two here, so some gusty winds, maybe some hail initially as these storms develop. Forecast for today, mostly cloudy, 81. Can't rule out a stray shower, and then we'll watch for those storms out west tonight. About a 60% chance, and then a 40% chance Thursday, especially Thursday morning, if we get some more storms coming in out of the west. So we officially go into spring, and then there's the front Friday. The numbers are what jump off the page here. We're talking 50s. Potentially by Friday afternoon and staying in the 50s Saturday and Sunday. Pretty impressive. Very impressive. Yeah. I want the cooler weather. It'll be nice. It'll be a nice change considering we've been at 80 just about every day, it feels like. Well, and we're just about due for a drink for the Texas wildflowers as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, that should allow them to bloom a little bit. Yep. yep. For, for, flourish just a little bit more. Justin, thank you, sir. Thank yeah. you. Right, we're now at 619, 67 degrees. Up next... More than a man who tested positive for the coronavirus in Kentucky, and he's refusing to stay under quarantine. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. Fragrances with exotic pairings. Warm vanilla and Himalayan magnolia. Tropical pineapple and Tunisian rosemary. And it's responsibly sourced. New Botanica by Airwick. Now at Target. Well, it's time for wrinkles. Neutrogena Rapid Wrinkle Repair. We've got the retinol that gives you results in one week. Not just any retinol. Accelerated Retinol SA. For not only smoother skin in one day, but younger looking skin in just one week. And that's clinically proven. Results that fast, or your money back. Unless you're attached to your wrinkles. One week, it's all it takes. Neutrogena. In this morning's GMA First Look, defying orders to quarantine or close restaurant doors. 
He's a 53-year-old Kentucky man who tested positive for COVID-19, and authorities say he refused to self-quarantine. It's a step I hope that I never had to take, but we can't allow one person who we know has this virus to refuse uh, to protect their, their neighbors. In Nashville, bar and restaurant owners were fighting orders from the city to close their doors. On Sunday, the management of a steakhouse owned by musician Kid Rock was refusing to close, sharing in a statement that the show must go on. Certain bars and restaurants in Nashville do not have to shut down. Our main concern are our employees. Video posted online from over the weekend showed a packed bar in downtown Nashville. It's all coming up at 7 a.m. with your GMA First Look. I'm Steve Osinsami, ABC News Atlanta. Now to a strong warning about coronavirus related online scams. Actors say the internet is drowning in malware and phishing scams. Advice users to be highly skeptical of emails and websites purported to offer information about the outbreak. Well, your gym may be closed because of the virus, but you can still work out. One of the nation's largest gym chains, Planet Fitness, is offering free online classes, and it's open to everyone, even non-members. Peloton is closing its retail stores, but plans to live stream classes. Apple has details on its updated return policy now that all its retail stores outside of China are closed until next week. Items will be accepted up to 14 days after stores reopen. If you have something being repaired, Apple will contact you to arrange pickup. One of Hollywood's It Couples is helping feed those in need. Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively say they're donating $1 million to two charities amid the coronavirus pandemic. One of the organizations is Feeding America, which focuses on helping in hunger through avenues like food pantries, soup kitchens, and shelters. Reynolds and Lively are hoping to help older adults and low-income families. 625, 67 degrees. Still ahead, how local libraries are still making resources available, even though they're closed due to the coronavirus. And an update on the roads with TransGuide. And Officer Marcus Trujillo from the San Antonio Police Department is straight ahead right here on GMSA. Here is a new case of coronavirus locally and a new ban in place for the city of San Antonio. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you all about it. I'm Alex Crochet from Washington. Coming up, the details of the White House's new 15-day plan to help slow the spread of novel coronavirus. And outside on your St. Patrick's Day 2020, looking rather similar to the weather we've had around here. It seems like for the past days and maybe even weeks, Spring-like temperatures, but there is a cool down still on the way in the extended forecast. Hi there. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It's March 17th. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Don't forget to put your green on like Justin did. That's right. Oops. Marcus is exempt. Yes, he is. Huh. Yeah, I wouldn't try pinching an officer. <laughs> May not work out Probably good. not a good idea. <laughs> Probably not going to end up well. well he, he's got a, at least a few weeks where he gets a pinch because we have our social distancing we're doing. That's now. right. you got to stay away. <laughs> uh, yeah, I completely forgot this morning, but it is St. Patrick's Day. We've got a little bit of green on the radar. So we like that. that. We've got some. Accounts. <laughs> sort of. Yeah, we've got uh, a couple of showers out there. Most of these are starting to dissipate, though, and uh, I, I think this is going to pretty much go away. We're not looking for much rain, at least through the first half of the day. Really even into the afternoon. It's probably tonight when we have our next best chance rain. That's going to be mainly out west. Uh, take a look at this picture on our KSAC Connect. Kind of hard to see here, but that, my friends, is oak. Those oak leaves developing or at least falling to the ground. And then uh, you got some of that oak pollen that's uh, basically spreading everywhere. We are in the midst of oak season. We've got a little ways to go before we reach the peak. But this was yesterday's pollen count. Mold's in the high category. Oak is in the moderate category. So mold and oak were the big offenders yesterday. Heckberry and Mulberry are low. We'll see where oak ends up today. I'm guessing it's still going to be fairly elevated. And there's a look at oak season. Yeah, we're getting close to the peak, but uh, it probably is going to get a little bit worse before it gets better. Temperature wise in the 60s and 70s out there this morning. It's warm and humid. Not a lot of fog though, so we've taken that out of the forecast. 74 by noontime, 81 high temperature, just 20% chance of rain. We're going to talk more about those chances for rain tonight. Chances for thunderstorms, in fact, coming up here in just a few minutes. But Let's get over to Marcus and get the latest on what's going on on the roadways. Well, you know that picture you were just showing with the oak yeah. pollen. That's what my driveway looked about 30 minutes after I cleaned it. Oof. Yeah, so. 
pointless, huh? It's it's bad out there. Uh, now what's not bad is the traffic, though. Traffic's still real light out there. Right now, we've cleared up all the accidents uh, from overnight and early this morning. So let's take on uh, the highways and let's take a look at a couple of the highway cameras. You can see there are 30 foot seven at Cesar Travis so far. No problems there. Moving on to tenant Callahan eastbound and westbound lanes running swiftly right now. So you may have noticed uh, yesterday morning and then yesterday afternoon. Uh, the travel times have changed, so the current reality is that we will be having lighter traffic. However, that doesn't mean you can start uh, focusing less on your driving. Make sure you put away those distractions, those cell phones and those coffee cups, because uh, that's when accidents can happen. Now, 604 Culebra is still looking pretty good there with no issues and moving over 35 Ben Zingelman. So far, no delays exiting for the hospital. Leslie. Thank you, Marcus. Well, this new day is starting out with a new coronavirus related ban in place for the city of San Antonio, and it has to do with large gatherings, groups of 50 or more people. Katrina Weber live near downtown with more on one of our top stories. Katrina, good morning to you. Any exceptions to this rule? Well, good morning. Yes, there are a few exceptions, but again, very few. One example would be the airport, which sees thousands of people every day. Most everyday gatherings, though, with 50 or more people are banned as a result of that declaration signed by Mayor Ron Nuremberg late yesterday. He took his hint from the recommendations of the Center for Disease, Centers for Disease Control, although those guidelines are even more restrictive. This ban came on the same day that Metro Health announced a fourth case of coronavirus has been confirmed locally. The mayor later posted a message on Twitter saying that person involved is a resident physician who recently traveled. So far, there's no information on who that person may have had contact with here. Now, all three of the other cases also involve people who had recently traveled. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Local councilman now among those in self-quarantine. Councilman Manny Palayas of San Antonio represents District 8, taking preventive measures after visiting family in Colombia. He has no symptoms and no knowledge of coming into contact with anyone who has the virus, what wants to be sure. Councilman Playa says he's using his 14 day period to work from home and make sure he stays connected with city business. Whataburger, the latest restaurant chain to close dining areas due to coronavirus. The San Antonio based business says it will close dining rooms by 3 p.m. today as more and more restaurants push for carry out or delivery. The dining rooms will be closed until further notice. Drive throughs remain open 24 hours a day all week. More information, of course, is on our website at ksat.com. Well, the number of COVID-19 cases in the U.S. is now more than 4,600. President Trump has issued new nationwide guidelines for the outbreak. He says we should be prepared for this to last through July or even August. ABC's Alex Presha has more. Presha. The novel coronavirus pandemic now affecting the U.S. in ways Americans have never seen. The new normal in California's San Francisco Bay Area, seven counties now under a shelter-in-place order. Close to seven million people told to only leave home for food, medicine, or exercise. We need to anticipate spread, but we also need to prioritize our focus. Uh, most important thing, again, is to protect the most vulnerable. Los Angeles raising the city's operation to level one, the highest, deputizing city workers to do jobs they don't normally do. At least 35 states ordering public schools to close, and at least 15 states have activated the National Guard. Also, new guidelines from President Trump's coronavirus task force, now urging people to avoid gatherings of 10 or more people, discretionary travel, and encouraging older people and those with underlying conditions to stay at home. The administration also telling people not to visit nursing homes and recommending bars and restaurants close in states with community spread. The president saying Americans should prepare for this to last well into the summer. People are talking about July, August, something like that. And America's health care workers already being pushed to the brink. Hospitals are reporting a spike in incoming patients amid a shortage of protective equipment like N95 respirators. The president telling states they should try to get that equipment on their own. It obviously makes a situation where we are in you know, desperate need of these and we're, we actually have to lock them up. I don't think any country or any preparation in the world will be able to be adequate to have the equipment that you need. The Senate is expected to take up a virus emergency bill today after the measure passed in the House. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is still teaming up uh, with the city of San Antonio to hold a community um, blood drive at the Alamo Dome this week. The blood drive will be held from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. today, tomorrow, and Thursday. Those who would like to donate blood must make an appointment at southtexasblood.org slash give SA or by calling 
the number on your screen, 210-731-5590. New coronavirus information continues to come into our newsroom all the time. Right now on KSAT.com, we have lists of updated closures, school offering, meals, and other important information. You can find it all on our homepage at KSAT.com. Two armed robbery suspects still on the run this morning, and San Antonio police need your help finding them. SAPD says back on February 21st, a suspect walked into a Circle K in the 9600 block of Culebra and stole a case of beer. Uh, police say a second suspect was standing at the door with a gun. Both got away in an older model white Dodge pickup. Take a look at the images on your screen. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 224-STOP. You could be eligible for a cash reward. Just about 637, 67 degrees. Up next, if you're stuck at home with the kids, how you can still use the library even though it's closed. Six forty. I have some books to return, but I'm going to do this. San Antonio Public Library currently closed to the public until next Monday, but it is possible the closing could be extended. Now, the good news is, if you have your membership library card, you can access their digital library. You can use your card's information to download items from their online service. The online digital library has access to library ebooks, movies, e magazines, and audiobooks. You may have a library card that's, ex you must have one that's not expired, of course. As of right now, you can't sign up for a membership card because the library is closed. You can ask a librarian online about any questions, though, you may have about resources. And if you're a member, don't forget to check out their pretty cool app. It's actually pretty handy. Trending now, KSET.com, Poteet Strawberry Festival has been postponed. May possibly be held in the fall. Festival is scheduled for April 3rd through the 5th, but with concerns about the pandemic, directors and other stakeholders decided it was best to postpone. It's the latest in a series of popular San Antonio area events to be affected due to the coronavirus. Also trending, Tom Hanks and his wife Rita Wilson have been released from an Australian hospital five days after they were diagnosed with the new coronavirus. Media reports show that the 63-year-old celebrities have been discharged from the Gold Coast University Hospital to self-isolate in a rented house. The couple arrived in Australia in late January, where an Elvis Presley biopic was to be shot. Hanks plays Presley's manager, Colonel Tom Parker. This week's KSAT Kids newsletter, you can learn how to calm your kids' fears about coronavirus. We have several ideas on how to keep kids stimulated and entertained. We also have a running list of events already canceled. You can find all this on our website at KSAT.com. Something else that popped up on the web yesterday, speaking of entertainment, a first sneak peek at Steven Spielberg's updated version of the classic film, West Side Story. Oh, that ought to be fun. It looks really good. And Rena Moreno is back after really? winning, I think, an Oscar for her performance in the original film. Yeah, thank you, Don. He just confirmed that. That's terrific. Well, you know what? As bad as things seem to be right now, there are some little bright spots that we can look forward to, and this will pass. Pleasant distractions. Yes. Hopefully it's pleasant on the roadways. Let's check in with Marcus and find out how your commute is shaping up. Well, so far, Leslie, uh, things still look pretty good out there. Now, we are expecting uh, the same kind of traffic or maybe even lighter that traffic than yesterday as uh, everyone starts to make adjustments to their schedule. However, that doesn't mean that uh, we can start moving our focus away from the driving. All the more reason to pay attention because uh, things can just pop out when you least expect it. Now, 21 and Grayson, traffic moving along fairly well. And look at I-10 at Callahan. We have more than enough room out there. All the travel times are actually looking a little bit better than the normal travel times we have for during the school year. And 37 and Jones, you see no issues there. And even that right-hand lane exiting for southbound 37 still looking pretty good. So all in all, not a bad time out there on the roadway. And as we take a look, uh, where's our silvery shot there? Do we still have it? There we go. We still have that shot here of uh, 281 Grayson area. 35 at Evans looking pretty good. And there it is. That looks almost Christmassy. Mark, how many days till Christmas? As we take a look at 281 at Grayson, it just has kind of a silvery tone to that picture. I have the number. You do? 283. Yeah, see, and this pic, this trans guide shot goes with it just well. Mm-hmm. Perfect. I'll always have the date for you. I love Christmas. <laughs> 283 days. Oh, not already. It's happening. No, yeah. no. Yeah. But no. you know what? We need all 283 degrees, to, uh, days rather, degrees? to get over <laughs> everything that's going on and move into a, a kind of a carefree Christmas yeah, season. It go. is kind of nice to think about after all of this, isn't yeah. it? That's right. But we got to get through it first. And, th and there will be an after at some point. There yeah, will I mean, be. We will get past this. Yes. We, think, we think about November and everything that's going on in November. There's, there's a lot to look forward to. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. November's going to be packed. so busy. Crazy.
crazy. But uh, save your yeah. vacation time. Everybody needs to take off for that month. Just be the whole, <laughs> the whole month. Good idea. Uh, but you know, in the meantime, we're going to be watching for a cold front, guys. Hey, we're sort of building some anticipation here because this one is going to pack a punch in some ways, uh, where we're going to see temperatures dip all the way down into the 50s potentially for highs. That's it. So this is going to be what I would say a noticeable front bordering on strong here because we're going to go from 80s all the way down to 50s for highs, low temperatures in the 40s. So this will be quite a change. And we're expecting this to arrive at Friday. So we still got a couple days before this happens. Uh, so Wednesday we're talking 80s. Uh, Thursday for sure we're probably talking 80s. But once this front comes through, there are the 50s. We get some gusty ones with it, some rain too. That's going to be uh, a welcome part of all of this. Outside right now we've got cloudy skies, 67. Dew point is at 64, so still very humid. East southeast chilly winds at about nine miles per hour. A little bit of rain on the radar down there around Laredo. This is that same area we've been showing you. It's shrinking by the minute, so the, the radar is going to be quiet through much of today. But we've got a little disturbance out here in Mexico, and that's going to enhance some thunderstorms. I think as we get into the late afternoon, evening hours, and then especially overnight across our western counties, that's going to be the corridor that we're going to watch very closely because we could get a couple strong storms there, and some of these storms could eventually make their way over towards San Antonio. So let's time this out for you. Uh, this is midday today. Not much going on. Five o'clock, same story, just a couple showers. But we start to see that development out west. And then by, say, 10 o'clock, this is working in towards some of our western counties, probably a cluster of storms. Again, a few of these could be on the stronger side. This is all going to weaken as it works its way east. But by, say, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning tomorrow, we still could have some showers, maybe a couple of rumbles of thunder here around San Antonio. It's possible before all this dies down Then most of Wednesday is going to be fairly quiet. Severe weather risk, mainly out west, so we're talking Rock Springs to Del Rio. There's a slight risk of some stronger storms. We'll certainly keep an eye on the radar today, and we'll keep you posted. Make sure you have the KSAT weather app. We'll let you know there, too, if there are any warnings or watches that go out. 81 degrees, the high temperature this afternoon, straight showers. Then we'll be, we'll be watching for the uh, storms off to the west. Extended forecast, 80% or 80%, 80 degrees tomorrow, 80 on Thursday, just a 40% chance of rain, but some better chances Friday into uh, Saturday and Sunday too. But those cooler temperatures will be there. 50s for highs, that's it. Saturday, Sunday, so a big change, guys, coming up. <laughs> that's a huge change. It is. And your confidence level for these changes is pretty high right now, right, pretty Chester? Pretty high, and I, I think the rain chances are pretty good, especially Friday into Saturday. So, All right. so much needed rain. Well, with the cooler temperatures and the rain, that always extends the wildflower season just a little bit further, and that's a win-win. I agree. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Justin. Well, it is 647, 67 degrees. Instead of keeping away, Americans are playing a game of stay away with each other, and it's all because of the coronavirus, of course. But as seen as Jeannie most reports, people on the Internet are sharing creative ways to pass the time. Going stir crazy? How to fill those endless hours of quarantine? The Internet has plenty of suggestions, from a Pac-Man type puppet gobbling up vehicles to the fitness instructor in Spain who gave a workout class to his neighbors. <laughs> to turtle tic-tac-toe, the turtle is the O, competing from permanent quarantine in his aquarium. The turtle tanked. There were plenty of cheerleaders like Max Brooks. This is my dad, Mel Brooks. Hi, Dad. Urging younger folks to protect older ones, like 93-year-old Mel. But if I give it to him, he could give it to Carl Reiner, who could give it to Dick Van Dyke. And before I know it, I've wiped out a whole generation of comedic legends. Model Heidi Klum posted herself kissing her husband through glass, not to mention her own reflection. And Arnold Schwarzenegger trotted out a pet mini horse and donkey. Oh, yeah, that's yummy. I eat with the whiskey and there's Lulu. To promote eating at home, while these live action matchsticks representing the power of social distancing caught fire online, created by Los Angeles visual artist Juan Delcan and his wife Valentina. The message everywhere, don't be a spreader. I'm going, I'm going. Let's hope the message is contagious. <laughs> Look at this picture here. <laughs> Genimo, CNN. No biting. New York.
Honored is passing the time with his mini donkey and his mini horse. It's not a Tuma. It's not a Tuma. The Mel no. Brooks one, if you haven't seen it, Google the whole thing. It's hilarious with I, his son. I, I want to watch the whole thing. Very clever. Yes. Uh, 649, 67 degrees. As you age, losing weight isn't as easy as it once was. Different muscles and joints, along with a slower metabolism, might make your goals more challenging. But tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to show you how you can still reach them. Outside with live cam. Wow, the morning has just flown by. The news you need to know before you go on this St. Patrick's Day is coming up. Hi, Kevin. The city of San Antonio issues a new coronavirus related ban just as a new case is confirmed locally. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. The mayor of San Antonio made that ban official with the stroke of his pen. Now the, it's not quite as restrictive as the recommendation from the Centers for Disease Control, but it does call for gatherings involving 50 or more people to be banned, except in a few special cases. This change came around the same time the city announced a fourth person has been confirmed as having the coronavirus. The mayor later sent out a tweet saying that person is a resident physician who recently traveled. All three of the other people locally who have been confirmed to have co the coronavirus also did some traveling recently. Reporting from near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. It's an eerie quiet in major cities across the country, with many restaurants and bars closing their doors to try and limit the COVID-19 spread. New York City restaurants were ordered to close at 8 p.m. and only offer takeout and delivery for the foreseeable future. This place will just go absolutely dark until until further notice, and I am, I am just completely out of work. President Trump expected to speak with restaurant executives Tuesday morning. According to Wells Fargo, about 82 million people are hourly employees and don't get paid if they don't work. On Monday, the Dow fell nearly 3,000 points, the biggest point decline in a single day and steepest drop in stock since 1987. Grinding the country to a screeching halt comes with a giant price tag. By some estimates, as much as $120 billion this month alone. The airline industry, one of the biggest hit. They say without a bailout of $50 billion, they are set to run out of money by the end of this year. A Federal Reserve study found almost 40% of American adults can't cover a $400 emergency. Now, Senator Mitt Romney proposing a one-time $1,000 check given to every American adult to help ensure they can meet their short-term obligations. There is some good economic news. Amazon announced as online orders increase, it hopes to add 100,000 workers and increase their minimum pay. And some supermarket chains also adding jobs. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. Five till seven. Let's check the roadways once again. Marcus, anything new to report? Well, no delays at this point. We do have a stalled vehicle, I-10 UTSA, but as you see, they did the right thing and pulled that vehicle off to the shoulder, so not even blocking the uh, exit ramp there. Other areas like I-10, 410, looking pretty good. 410 Austin Highway in the northeast side, no issues. And take a look at I-10 and rolling eastbound, westbound lanes. More than enough room right now. Justin? Thank you, Marcus, and uh, we've got mostly cloudy skies out there. Temperatures right now in the upper 60s. We're going to be up close to 81 today, mostly cloudy. There is a chance for some thunderstorms out west tonight. We'll see if those make it to San Antonio by, say, dawn tomorrow morning. It's warm tomorrow and Thursday. Then a cold front moves through. This brings some good rain chances. Also cools us down quite a bit. We're talking 50s for highs. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, it'll be chilly. It'll be cloudy and potentially somewhat rainy. So keep an eye on the weekend. Thank you, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being with us, everybody. It's just still weird to see y'all so far away. <laughs> but I love you guys. I love you. For feels surreal. Have a great day. Good morning, America's next. We're back at nine.